Okay, so in the last video, I built this nice combined layer, which I started to work on top of, and I could build a little bit more definition, especially lights and darks, especially some detail, like the necklace, the edges of the hair and the, the clothing. And I could spend hours zooming in, refining, working with it, you know, picking up the right tone of color, softening it by using a slightly lower opacity brush. I can see that on the forehead here, kind of pushing the edges back and forth, smoothing them out. And if this was, you know, a paid commission and not just trying to, to show you a demonstration of of digital painting, it might be worth worth it to me to spend all that time. But for now, I want to show you some finishing techniques. I think I've gotten it to a point where I like the basic structure of the likeness. And now I feel like I can play with it a little bit. Because as I work on it, it just becomes more and more representational, more like the photographs. And I want to maybe look at some of the other inspiration I had for this project that was more non-representational, more textural. And I'm thinking especially of kind of the swirls and texture of something like this that I can bring on top and stretch over. And just like a texture overlay, if I rasterize this, this composite, I can kind of layer it into my paint a little bit. Get some of those hard edge strokes. And sometimes the best way to do that is through the blending modes, so pin light. And you see how that will, will kind of cut through my painting in certain ways. And then I can maybe move this and see, okay, where is that useful? I love these marks at the bottom. And so that's at 100% with pin light, but now I can take my eraser. And you'll see a lot of this in digital art. It's a lot of fun. And I can take that opacity of the eraser up all the way get nice and big and because I'm not interested in the background I'm just going to erase it away from the background and and erase it away from the places I don't think it's as helpful now this of course is based on my stylistic tastes and interests I'm going to let the edges get a little strange sometimes. They're like stray brush marks. Got rid of a little too much there. Let's see. Right here. And then I can actually use my lasso and take chunks of it, of this composited texture, and move them where I think they help my painting more. I can rotate them, I can stretch them, I can warp them, I can continue to erase away. And it's just ways of messing with it at the end. There's a lot from this bottom that I really like.
I might take like a big chunk of that and move it. Oh, I like what that does to the bottom. And then I can control T, remember all that compositing stuff. Right click within it, I can warp it. Bring more visual interest in. Yeah, it does look like feathers. I'm kind of compositing in hard edges almost randomly. Pushing them around as accents, so then I can always cut away from them with my eraser. This is just one way you might play with your work. And it's definitely something that compositing artists and concept artists, people that work between digital painting and compositing use all the time to add a polish and a finish to their efforts. And what's nice about using the, the lasso in this way is it just takes hard edges, you know, big chunks, like you're cutting it out with a knife and moving it in. And because digital painting, especially as you're refining it, tends to work so soft, so soft edged. That can be a nice contrast. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can judge, well, do I like it better with it or without it, right? And then I can play with blending it in. With different opacities, different blending modes. You can even try it just 100% opaque, and it looks like that. But that's not as, as colorful and as interesting as using, I think, pin light worked really well. And I can always duplicate it. Command J. And maybe try a different mode, like overlay, and then really tone that down. In opacity. Yeah, I'm liking that. I want to cut away from the bottom. I'm not sure of this shape. And I like the one that my composite gave me a little bit better. So I'm going to delete away from that combined layer, but that means I also need to delete away from the refined layers underneath, especially the rough shape layer where I put that red in to begin with. And then I might need to soften it with some brushwork. And that's the same way I clean up any kind of stray marks that I don't want. Going all the way back to our first exercise. All right. Come on. There we go. And then I can use my eraser. Now that I have it in two layers, I can erase it away a little bit on one layer and then a little bit on another. Have a little bit more control. One's overlay, one's pin light. Yeah. I do like it.
I like how it looks like feathers. And then if I zoom in, you'll see it adds that variation to my paint surface. That then I can just take my brush and then continue painting on my combined layer. I can soften some of those remaining edges. So digital painting doesn't need to be arduous and take forever. What I love about digital art is we can build interesting textures. You don't always have to make everything yourself. You just need to recognize what you want and be willing to experiment with it. Know how to use the tools effectively. And this is a way I can get something that looks unified and finished. Even though most of my painting might have been focused on the face and on parts of the um, likeness more than on you know the bottom of her robes and you decide you know the level of finish that you're comfortable with but i like that kind of glitchy aspect of it and maybe one last little thing let's see Let's take greens from here and here. Let's duplicate that and let's move it. Whoops, have auto select on. Break up the hair. Stretch it a bit. There we go. So it kind of swirls around. And then just erase out the edges. Yeah. So now. It has the, the feeling of the portrait with all of the textures, with all of the energy, and even some well-chosen hard edges. Okay. So now I want to save my work, Command S, and then I want to clean it up. So I'm going to turn off my reference layer. And decide on the background I think is most flattering. I think the gray is most flattering. I will crop it down. And then I will save it as a JPEG and put it into my canvas folder. So export as a JPEG. And you can see it at full resolution. You can build up a pretty interesting paint texture. You shouldn't feel too limited. I, I like collecting images that show brush strokes. This was another one I was kind of interested in doing and those flower scans. Because in digital art, putting something like this in, compositing it in is just like choosing a certain paint that gives you a certain shape and certain stroke and placing that onto your onto your painting. So it's not that different. It's not how I want you to build your digital painting because you don't have the measure of control, but it's a good way to, to work on finishing it off. Layer stuff 